I've been doing comedy over 10 years, and it is a dream job if you hate money. <laughs> like seriously, I, I have a podcast called Hot Breath, and I've interviewed over 400 comedians on there, and the top three tips have been write jokes, get on stage, and marry someone with a job. <laughs> That is the career path for anyone looking at this, like, oh, I'd like to do that. Well, you know, marry up and you're here. <laughs> That's why I'm so gussied up. This is my wife, this is not me. I shop at Goodwill, I'm a Goodwillionaire, but. <laughs> for this, she got me all fixed up. You know, I'm a fixer upper husband. She's got me looking like this, I'm afraid she's about to flip me. <laughs> Because, I mean, I've had to overcome some hurdles even to get to where I am tonight. Like, the, I think the biggest hurdle of my life was being born in Rome, Georgia, which, if you're not familiar, just picture Mayberry, but with meth. <laughs> oh, yeah, I look purebred, but I'm inbred. <laughs> I was born in a trailer, <laughs> AKA a hallway with wheels. <laughs> but living in a trailer is very luxurious. It was like living in an Uber and Airbnb. <laughs> and I think the biggest benefit of being born in Rome, Georgia, is I now speak fluent redneck Tourette's. <laughs> Yeah, we codes, I, I'm in there now, don't get it, don't let me come out now, here. Here now, here. Well, we can go back to the college voice. <laughs> but it's, it's in there, like, you know, I live in Atlanta now. You know, I'm all uppity, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, so in Atlanta, my name is pronounced Joel Byers. But in Rome? Jaiwal. Jaiwal bars. <laughs> and my wife's name is Erin, but in Rome, it's Urn. <laughs> Jaiwal and Urn, huh? And that's how my family still talks. They still talk in that honky bonics, you know? <laughs> So anytime we go visit, my granny's always like, hey, Jay, well, howdy. How's Ern Dern? <laughs> like, well, she's out yonder, earning a shirt. <laughs> really earning her keep, you know? <laughs> but I did marry the perfect wife. Oh, she has a tattoo, so. <laughs> She can handle permanent mistakes. <laughs> I do love her though. I mean, we, we got married on April Fool's Day. That was, that was my one piece of input into the wedding. That was the last time she asked me a question. <laughs> because I was getting interrogated. Like, I was at a point, I was like, man, I'd rather plan a divorce than a wedding, goodness. <laughs> Every day there was a whole grocery list of things. Well, are we gonna have a band or a DJ? What's the hashtag gonna be? Are we gonna have a theme? What, what, what kind of food are we gonna have? And I had to be the voice of reason. Just be like, honey, I love you, and I want whatever your parents pay for. <laughs> Ask the investors these questions. <laughs> Because I'm still paying off your two rings. <laughs> Which I didn't know women got two rings. Uh, two weeks before the wedding, my wife's like, did you get the wedding band yet? I was like, the band? It's like, Are your, aren't your parents paying for the band? It's like, no, there's an engagement ring and then a wedding band. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Beyonce didn't mention that one. <laughs> said, put a ring on it. <laughs> well, apparently there's a remix. <laughs> like, if you like it, then you gotta put a ring on it. 
but if you love her, you better put another ring on it. It's like, oh, no, 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 no more dough. No more dough. Yeah, congratulations. You, you get two rings, all right? That's why men get paid more. It's a ring tag. Please, I'm all for equality, all right? I would love to make what my wife makes. <laughs> and it really, she gets the last laugh because at our wedding, I, I cried, like, a suspicious amount. <laughs> It was cute at first, but it escalated quickly. It went from, oh, he loves her, to, oh, he's about to confess. But it's emotional. I'm sure any married man can like relate. Like when you just see your, your best friend, your soulmate, walk down the aisle and just, just hit you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no more wedding planning. <laughs> beautiful thing. But now we've been married like five years. Now we get like heckled about having kids. Like all, that's all like my family. Who wouldn't you have kids? I was like, oh, are you raising them? <laughs> we can't afford kids right now. We don't have unlimited data. <laughs> I mean, you can't raise a kid on 10 gigs a month. Not if you love it. Because that iPad, you know, that's the new pacifier now. Anytime the kid cries, oh, here, Timmy, just Google happy. I'm going to get on Facebook and find your father. And the kid runs off alone with an iPad. It's a lot of work being a parent, too. I don't know how, like, my sister has, like, a three-year-old she photographs this thing like it's missing. I'm like, is this Facebook or an Amber Alert? I don't know, I don't know, I ain't nobody got time for that. I think I will eventually have kids though. You know, someone's gotta pay off my loans. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Sally Mae hits me up every month asking when I'm paying back loans. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Student debt is over one trillion dollars. She can't catch us all. <laughs> so you bet on the wrong horse, Sally. <laughs> yeah, I owe 80 grand, the government owes 20 trillion, all right? I'll pay off my debt after they pay theirs. <laughs> The only thing still made in America are loans. <laughs> and my school was a bit expensive, I will say. I studied abroad in East Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, very exotic in them thar hills. They have their own redneck Tourette's going on over there. Like Joel and Jowl. In East Tennessee, they pronounce math, mayeth. Math. I thought I was signing up for math class. Day one, like, hey y'all, welcome to math class. Today we learn how to subtract your teeth and divide your family. <laughs> That'll be eighty thousand dollars. Like that math doesn't add up. 